Thank you for joining this edition of the UCLA Anderson Forecast Direct podcast. I'm Leo Feller. I'm a senior economist at UCLA Anderson, and I'm very pleased to have with us today Joanna Marinescu from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, Joanna, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we are going to be talking today about unemployment insurance based on a paper that Joanna and her co-authors Daphne Scandalis and Daniel Zhao uh, wrote and published recently. Um, and this is on the job search, job posting, and unemployment insurance during the COVID-19 crisis. So, Joanna, at the beginning of the pandemic, we saw that unemployment increased to almost 15%. Uh, we saw that we had a loss of 20 million payroll jobs. And now, 18 months later, we're hearing anecdotes and seeing data about labor shortages. You wrote this paper with your co-authors looking at how unemployment insurance affected job search and vacancy creation. And I'd like to ask you a few questions about, about your work. So, you know, in a big picture, what was the effect of the enhanced unemployment insurance at the beginning of the pandemic? Did it mean that people searched less for jobs? Right, so if you look at economic theory, it predicts that when we make unemployment insurance more generous, people are going to search less hard. And this was the premise that we started with when doing this study. And then we grabbed data from online job search from a website called Glassdoor um, and looked at these job applications. And what we saw is that when uh, benefits increased more, this is when people applied less. So essentially an increase uh, in the level of benefits. And remember that benefits were increased by $600 a, uh, uh, you know, a week, which was enormous, like a never seen increase we did see a decrease in individual job applications that was caused by this increase in the generosity of unemployment insurance. How, how big was this impact, right? So you talk about $600 being you know, a really big increase in the unemployment insurance, by how much did it reduce job search? Right, so you know, if, you, if you think about magnitude, so like how big uh, you can, uh, think about our estimate that you know if you increase the value of unemployment insurance by 100%, so you double unemployment insurance, this would decrease applications by about 36%. So you know it's not a one for one, uh, but a 100% increase in benefits. So that would be a doubling again. That would lead to a 36% decline in job applications. So that's a huge impact, right? But interestingly. In your paper, you say, all right, even though there's this huge impact on the higher unemployment insurance decreasing the number of uh, job applications, you didn't seem to find that this actually reduced employment. And, yeah. and why is that? Right. So actually, we don't look at employment directly, but other people have looked at that and found no effect. And in fact, what our paper does is answer the puzzle of why, on the one hand, you would expect a more generous unemployment insurance to reduce people's job search effort, then shouldn't you see less employment from this? So that's really the puzzle that uh, we set out to explain here. And the way that we reconcile this is by looking at the market level. So what you have to, to understand is that this, this is not just an issue of individual job seekers decided to apply, deciding to apply less, but rather you have to look at the whole market for a given job, let's say accountants in Philadelphia. So if you look at it through this lens, um, you know, if all uh, accountants together decide to apply less, there will be fewer applications. But the question is relative to the number of available jobs. And so a big thing that happened during the crisis is that the number of jobs tanked big time uh, when COVID hit. And as a result, uh, you know, the, the really the big event was that there was a huge decline in the number of jobs. At the same time, you had a huge increase in the number of the unemployed, and each one was applying a little bit less due to unemployment insurance. But in the end, the decline in the number of jobs was the dominating factor. So that on average, you would see more applications per job during the pandemic than before. Again, this is due to the fact, the big factor here is that there's so few jobs so many unemployed, and that's really the big factor. And yes, without unemployment insurance, you would, would see even more applications for job, but we were already facing a glut uh, to, due to the imbalance between uh, jobs and job seekers in the labor market. How do you differentiate between 
people not searching for jobs because they're getting more generous unemployment insurance and people not searching for jobs because we're in the middle of a pandemic and they don't want to have the exposure or because their kids are home from school and so you know they need to be homeschooling rather than searching for jobs like how do you differentiate the effect of the the increased benefits themselves from everything else that's going on in the economy right so that's always the tricky million dollar question when we do such research and the way we do it is by essentially comparing people who saw different relative increases in benefits so even though everybody had a benefit increase of $600, for people who on a regular basis would be getting $200 in benefits, that's like a huge uh, increase. Whereas for people who were already getting $600, it's a smaller increase. So essentially, this is what we use uh, to um, understand the results. Again, uh, comparing people who normally would getting a low, be getting a low benefit amount versus normally would be getting a high benefit amount. For those who are already getting a lot of money from regular unemployment insurance, the $600 was a smaller increase than for those who were getting very little money from unemployment insurance and this $600 represented a huge percent increase. And so therefore we are seeing, what we are seeing essentially is that those who were getting low benefit amounts and therefore saw a bigger relative increase in benefits, those are the people who cut their applications relative to others who are already getting high amounts of benefits from their regular unemployment benefits. And even though they had 600 extra, that represented a smaller percent increase for them. Got it, got it. So I think it's important also to, to think about the time period when you did this work. So what is the time period that, you know, when you did this analysis uh, that, that you're looking at? Right, so this is just, it's important to know that the data we were looking at there was between April and July, 2020. So this is essentially right when the pandemic was starting uh, through the summer of 2020, when we saw the economy reopening at that point. Um, and what's quite interesting is that we look at the effects over time and we see that even when the economy was reopening, so when there were already more jobs, even then it turned out that, you know, the effect of unemployment insurance was not big enough to um, essentially make it really hard for employers to hire because the jobs had recovered some, but not completely, even, even by, by the summer. And so, and again, remember, there were lots of unemployed out there. So one big factor you always have to keep in mind is that it's not just about the behavior of every individual job seeker, but also how many job seekers are searching at the same time. So when you have a lot of unemployed, it's going to be easier for employers to fill that job because they are just more candidates. Even if each one of them might be sending a few, you know, a couple applications, you know, fewer than they normally would, still collectively they're sending a lot of applications. So is there a, a magic uh, point at which the effect of having fewer job applications actually begins to reduce the amount of employment creation. Like, can we figure out, okay, during early in the pandemic, there were so many job seekers for so few jobs that having, you know, fewer job seekers didn't make that much of an effect on employment. But over time, we've actually seen that uh, the number of job openings have increased. And actually, if we, if we look at the data now, we have about a million, 11 million job openings for 8 uh, million workers or, uh, or people who are, who are now unemployed. So, you know, at what point do we do we say okay well wait wait a minute maybe the the unemployment benefits are actually reducing not just job searches but reducing uh, employment itself right so what we know is that certainly the impact of the benefits on employment is going to be more negative as we have more and more job openings relative to the number of job seekers and the number of job seekers hasn't dramatically increased since last summer uh, so, you know, you have the number of vacancies going up dramatically, number of job seekers somewhat constant or even declining. And that means that what we call tightness, so it's like the number of vacancies relative to the number of job seekers is going up. And generally, that makes it harder for employers to hire. And therefore, it's more and more likely that uh, the generosity of unemployment benefits can contribute to a lower level of job creation. 
But it's hard to say for sure how big that effect is in the grand scheme of things, given that there's many other drivers you know, of, uh, of behavior that we can talk about. And in fact, people have looked at uh, when states cut the benefits and you know, we, can, we could talk about those results. So essentially, yes, you would expect it to have a more negative impact on employment. You would expect that unemployment benefits are going to have a more negative impact on employment uh, you know, in the recent months during the summer and spring of 2021 than in, during the summer and spring of 2020, but it's hard to pin down that, that number. So you talk about in your paper, labor market tightness, and I'm glad you brought up the term, and you talk about an efficient or inefficient level of tightness, right? So, so what does that mean? Like, what, what does it mean if we have so many job seekers for such few jobs or very few job seekers right, for a lot of job openings. What, what does that mean in terms of the efficiency of being able to find, you know, good, I think we call it labor market matches. Right, exactly. So essentially, you know, you, you in the labor market, you kind of want to balance the incentives for each side of the market to search and form matches. So, you know, workers must be motivated enough to find a match, but also firms must be motivated enough to, you know, make, make a hire. And so essentially, you know, there is an optimal level of tightness that is a middle ground between too high and too low. You know, you, it's not good to have a lot of job seekers chasing very few vacancies or at the opposite extreme, having a ton of vacancies and there's nobody to, to hire that will uh, reduce employment in the economy and be a, be a bad thing. But the exact level that's optimal really is going to depend on specific modeling assumptions, uh, you know, a bunch of things that we have to assume that it cannot come directly from the data, essentially. So you have to have a theory in the background plus the data, and then you can attempt to give some idea of that optimal level of tightness, but it's not something that it will come directly uh, from the data analysis itself. Perfect. So you, you mentioned a little bit of the, the broader economic context. And in your paper, you actually reference a lot of this other research too, uh, where you, you fit your paper into the, the broader labor market studies that have gone on during this, uh, during this pandemic. So how, how should we think about the balance between the incentive effects, uh, in this case, job search, it's what your paper is about, and the stimulus effects on the economy of the enhanced unemployment insurance or the welfare effects for those who actually receive this unemployment insurance. How do we balance these out? Right. So this is important to, to bring, up, bring into the conversation because what the benefits do, yes, they provide some disincentive for people to search for jobs, but at the same time, they allow people to consume. And that means that there's demand for companies' products and that ultimately ends up creating jobs. And so you have these two sides of the equation that on the one hand, people searching less could lead to less employment although we discussed that it really depends on how many vacancies are out there. But on the other hand, people getting more money for the benefits uh, could lead to high employment through the, what we call the aggregate demand effect. So the fact that people are spending and therefore businesses have more customers and want to hire more workers. And so um, you know, the, what research has shown from prior recessions is that generally speaking, this aggregate demand effect is quite strong, especially during a recession, meaning that generically, if you give money to people during a recession, they tend to use it, uh, you know, firms use it, people use it, and that tends to generate more jobs. And so, you know, through, through that other channel, uh, the unemployment benefits are a positive uh, in the economy. And so that, again, brings to the fore this idea of balancing, you know, how do you balance that this multiple considerations to get to the right solution. And I think part of it is going to be judgment and priorities from the point of view of policymakers. You take the best evidence out there, you understand the different sides of the question, and you make an informed judgment about how this is gonna balance out roughly, and also what are your priorities, you know? Would you rather err on the side of maybe right now helping workers a little bit more, even though maybe there's some chance that employment will be slowed down for a bit? Is that the more important consideration or are you more intensely worried about filling those jobs quick, quick, quick? So, you know, that too, in part, is a matter also of uh, the priorities that policymakers may have. Well, I love that. I think you actually 
you know, have provided the context of the circularity of the argument, right? So we give more generous unemployment benefits that stimulates the economy. That means that we have jobs being created and a lot of demand for workers, which means that we have more vacancies and it's harder to fill these vacancies because people are receiving these unemployment insurance benefits and maybe there's a little bit of a disincentive effect, but we wouldn't have had the uh, higher vacancies and the job exactly. creation to begin with, unless we had those, you know, more generous unemployment insurance benefits. So, exactly. you know, that's I, always I, why I, 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 I tell, you know, um, business owners who say, oh my God, this is so bad, the unemployment benefits. Well, wait a second. Yes, they create some disincentives, but without them, the economy would probably not be where it's at today. Exactly. So, you know, that's really important to keep in mind. So I, I want to actually think about, like you, you made a very good point of, it's very hard for policymakers to actually decide like what is the optimal level of benefits, right? When should the benefits be reduced? How long should the benefits go on? And, and so I wanted to get your, your thoughts about what, what we draw away from this experience, right? We, we set this $600 uh, unemployment insurance uh, you know, benefit early on in the pandemic. There were moments where maybe it would get extended, maybe it would not get extended. You talk in your paper about how this might actually lead to, you know, some some changes in job search behavior if people don't know how long the benefits are going to last. Um, you know, what what are your thoughts about? You know, a, a lot of economists have talked about automatic stabilizers, right? Something that will trigger benefits to go up, or something that will trigger the benefits to start coming down. Well, you know, what are your thoughts on whether or not this would make it a little bit easier? Uh, for policymakers to actually accomplish this this delicate balance. For sure. So first, let me note that we already have that uh, some degree of automatic st stabilizers with unemployment insurance because at the state level, there's a program called extended benefits that gives people additional uh, weeks of unemployment benefits. So if you stay unemployed for a long time, when the state unemployment rate exceeds certain thresholds. So it's already there to some extent for states. But historically, the federal government has tended to top up and make it even more generous uh, during, during recessions. And so then the debate is, should we make this extra layer that's uh, federal level more permanent, that it really varies with uh, economic conditions? And I think our paper uh, you know, would come in support of that in the sense that we're showing that, in fact, being more generous when the economy is doing badly is not costly in terms of employment, because as we were saying before, even though there are some disincentives in a bad crisis, there's just not enough jobs. So it's okay if the many job seekers search a little bit less. Um, so in that sense, it's strongly supportive of that. Um, but you know, I think there's also some political considerations. Uh, and from the point of view of the incentives of policymakers, they like to be able to say there's a crisis and we're doing something. And so if you uh, make it too automatic, you're removing from them a tool that you know, allows them to look good uh, during a crisis by, by adding on these extra benefits. So I think, yes, in principle, it'd be nice to have more automatic aspect in the unemployment benefit system, but I think that may come uh, you know, uh, against the incentives of uh, policymakers who want to be able to have a bit more discretion and be able to claim that they've done something when the crisis hits. You want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, the job uh, that the paper is called Job Search, Job Posting, and Unemployment Insurance during the COVID nineteen crisis, uh, and we have a link to the paper on our website. Uh, and you want to thank you so much. We really appreciate you talking to us about this topic. Thank you so much, Leo.